Hi, Randy, K7AGE. Now it's time to continue on with my SWR bridge and start soldering the parts onto the terminal strip. Let's get going. Okay, I'm ready to start. I'm going to be following my drawing here. I'm just going to set that aside and have the terminal strip in the vise. And I've soldered up my 100 ohm resistors in parallel. And now um, I'm going to mount this one and I'm going to put it from here to up there. So I'm just going to bend the lead down like this through the hole and I'm going to keep it up off here a little bit. Bend this over to here and bend this down. That should fit in there okay. I'm going to bring this around and bend that back like that. I'll hold it up with the pliers, bring that around. I'm not going to solder these, but I will cut off the the excess leads. And I place the second 50 ohm, the pair of 100 ohm resistors, between uh, these two solder lugs. So I'm not going to show mounting every single part as we go along. You kind of get the idea. So now I have the two diodes mounted with the cathodes towards these two center lugs, because these will be the pickoffs for the forward and reverse. And I mounted one of the capacitors and 220k ohm resistors from the end of this diode over the ground on the back side. I originally was going to put it on the front, but I think that'll work all right. The capacitor lead's kind of short, so I have to make sure that it doesn't short out against these other two lugs. And I mounted the other capacitor and 220k ohm resistor from this diode over to this ground lug here. So I think I'm ready now to prepare the toroids to be mounted. So I've trimmed my coil leads here for the terminal strip, and now I need to scrape off the enamel. So one way, you can just use a, um, a knife, knife edge, and just, just kind of scrape along here. And you can, they can remove all of the enamel coating. You can see I'm getting some, some bits on the uh, green mat. Or a little bit of sandpaper fold that over. You can kind of sand that off. So keep working with the sandpaper, keep going back and forth and just kind of give the uh, toroid a twist and uh, in a little bit you'll have it all cleaned up. So before we get too far along we should talk about these dots that are on the toroids. Now these are transformers. So what this means is that the winding here and the winding there are in this same relationship and so therefore the voltage will be in the same relationship. If we look at this drawing it shows it uh, much more simplified we show a transformer and these two ends have the dots on them so that means the output voltage is following the input voltage. If you have the polarity switched around then the output phase will be 180 degrees out. So what this means is that when we install the toroids, we need to make sure that we get these windings in the same relationship. If we look at the coil close up, you can see the, the wire here um, that's coming out on the bottom. As I pass the red wire through, you can see the ends of both the red wire and the enameled wire are passing through the center in the same direction. So they are in the same polarity. When I move the wire around to the other lead, you can see that the red wire is coming out on one side of the toroid and the other wire is coming out on the other side. So those two wires are not in correct polarity. And to help me keep it straight, which end is which, I placed a piece of red insulation down over what I'm going to call the dotted end. So I'm ready to mount the toroids onto the terminal strip. So I have my drawing for the terminal strip, my two toroids, and my schematic. And I've numbered all of the lugs on the terminal strip. And I've gone through it and I've identified uh, which wire for the toroids goes on, on which lug. I've actually rewound the toroids uh, to make them come out the way they look on, on my drawing here. So that then only took a couple minutes to pull the wires out and wind it the way I've shown here. So now I'm ready to uh, place them onto the terminal strip. So I have the toroids mounted on the solder lugs here. This is T1. You can see the, the two dotted leads going through in the same direction. So they're correct. And the output side of the, 
one turn goes towards the transmitter. This is T2. Again, you can see the two dotted leads or the two leads with the red insulation on it are going through in the same direction. So this is on pin 7, pin 6, passes through and goes over to 2 and 3. And when I get these soldered up, I can move things around so nothing gets shorted here. So, okay, time to start soldering. You know, always place the iron away from the things you want to solder. Just let the heat build up. Solder the wires. So I'll put the iron in the opposite area from where I want to solder. Let the lug heat up. There it goes. Feed the solder in. It flows around everything. And everything will flow. There it is, nice and hot and filled. Put just a dab on the iron. That helps with the heat transfer. Again, feed the solder in and let it flow. Just give it time. It'll flow. Fill up the hole in the solder lug and you're all set. And Move it on to the one lead of the toroid there. And there we go. And I think we're done. Well, I think I'm about done for this video. I got this all assembled now and now I got to figure out how I'm going to maybe mount this and with some connectors and stuff. So uh, in my next video, we'll figure that out. So thanks for watching. Randy K7AGE.